The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. Welcome to Postcards, I'm Dana Johnson. Today we travel north to take a peek inside the Evansville located studio of wildlife artist John House. To this date, John is the only artist to win all five Minnesota DNR wildlife stamps. Also, we take a seat with the band Hardwood Groove at the Historic Homes Theater in Detroit Lakes. But first, let's catch up with the Detroit Lakes artist Caroline Smith, a rising musical talent who tells us about growing up as a musician in a small town. I was talking to my buddy Jake Hansen, who's playing with us tonight. He's also a um, Mason Jennings guitar player. He's doing double duty tonight. But I was making jokes. I was like, if we play really well tonight, you guys, I don't have to go to my 10-year reunion. Like, this is it. Like, you know, everything I would brag about my 10-year reunion. They're all just going to be here, and I'm opening for Mason Jennings. We are in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, at the Historic Homes Theater attached to the Community Center. And tonight, uh, Hardwood Groove is playing, a local Detroit Lakes band. My band, Caroline Smith and the Goodnight Sleeps are playing, and the one and only Mason Jennings. I played with B.B. King when I was 17. Um, I started playing live shows when I was like 15. My mom heard me playing in my room and oh my god freaked out. She was like, oh, you're gonna be rich and famous and I'm gonna take you there. And then it's like, oh my god, it was so annoying. It was one of those like, mom, stop moments. But um, she started making me play around a lot and I had to do terrible things like play hair fashion shows and do all that stuff and Fargo and stuff like that. But God bless her soul. She always knows what's right. Um, there was a, a promoter that happened to be at one of these shows and s took an interest in my career, my you know 16-year-old career at that point, and um, started putting me on these amazing shows. You said I, I never took in. I got to play with Mason Jennings in Fargo, and then through that, he was like, oh, you know, I'm promoting these B.B. King shows. Do you want to play with B.B. King? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. So I got to play a show with B.B. King on his 80th birthday, along with a few others. I, I kind of just started writing music because it felt natural. And that's always like the best answer I can give for it. It just it just happened. It wasn't like a I want to I'm going to write songs. It was just just came out. Chords made me think of songs that I could potentially sing that didn't exist yet and I just started writing them. Growing up in Detroit Lakes, um, 
was interesting. What was nice about Detroit Lakes is the size, and um, to be an individual here sometimes is hard, but um, it's kind of like the big fish little pond scenario. You can really connect with a lot of people intimately because it's so small, and um, there are a lot of great mentors and teachers that I got to connect with, and I, I wonder if that would have happened if I had grown up in Minneapolis or, you know, so it was um, the encouragement that came from being in a small town was something I feel fortunate about. So it's so nerve-wracking to play in front of my hometown. <laughs> and in case you were wondering what I was doing, like, what are the girl in <laughs> Oh, that's my babysitter. <laughs> I have no idea how I've never lost my voice. We'll go on like huge tours where every night, you know, I'm singing and I'm belting it out. I always feel like um, you only get one first impression and we always play a new place every night. So I'm always just like, whether we're in some dinky art space or something, I'm always just yelling and rip roaring. <laughs> I took vocal lessons when I was a kid because I, I loved all the musicals and all that stuff and I in Detroit Lakes I took um, voice lessons from a woman by the name of Kathy Larson and I think she just instilled in me how to appropriately use your voice whether you were singing loud or soft. The new album is, uh, it's very different for me, and it's, um, I've been going through a lot of, like, life changes right now, um, that have all kind of come about organically, and this record is one of them. My band and I went through a little stint where we were not happy with the songs we were playing. It was very evident. We were fighting a lot. Somebody wanted to sound this way. I wanted to sound this way. And it just wasn't working, and we're like, we had like almost a full record of songs, we had like seven songs. And I just like looked at them, I was like, you know what it is? I just wouldn't ever listen to this. I wouldn't ever listen to these songs. I don't think we should use any of these. And they're like, we just worked all year on these. I'm like, I know, but I don't think this is me. I walk up with one eye, as he slept next to me. And so I, I just started, like as an experiment, I just wrote a soul song. And it just came out of me so fast. And it was just like exactly how I wanted to sing it, how I wanted to say it. And the band was like, whoa, where did that come from? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, write another one. So I came back the next day and I wrote another one. And it came, it was so easy. I just sat down on the piano, which I don't play the piano. And it just came out of me. And they're like, write 10 more. And I did. Right now, it feels just so good to finally do something, or like really do something that I feel 100% honest about. Especially because it was doing these old songs, I kept writing these old songs because that's what people wanted to hear. And now writing songs that I would want to hear for myself is amazing. It's the best feeling in the world. Um, 
And I think I, for now, I would just like to not lose sight of that because it gets, as a, as a woman, as, a, um, as an artist, as a public figure, it's really hard to maintain sight of something, maintain sight of yourself and what makes you feel honest and proud. And right now, I just want to like hold on to that and try to keep, keep that in my uh, peripheral. Now John House tells us about his long journey to winning all five Minnesota DNR stamps and how spending time outdoors has had a great influence on his art. When I was very young, I, um, I just had an artistic flair and I was always doodling. I would doodle on the supper table without a pen or a pencil, I would just doodle. There was an artist inside of me at a very young age and my parents recognized that and God bless them, they, they really invested into me. They, um, they got me private art lessons, they bought me materials, sketch pads, charcoal paint, oil paint. Um, they, did their, they did their best. I really did not pursue art in high school uh, or really in college. Uh, but through a long series of events, um, uh, my, uh, I just wasn't happy in college. And so I, um, I left college to become a Canadian fishing guide for a summer. Well, I had to make a living. And I had seen a, an article about a Minnesota decoy carver who was doing some beautiful carvings and fetching really good prices. And so I thought, this is, this is how I'm going to do it. This is what I'm going to do. I kept at it and got uh, pretty okay at carving. Ended up uh, entering uh, four international contests, won them all. But what happened was um, the artist in me wasn't satisfied with carving. Being the irresponsible artist that I was, I jumped ship, left carving, pretty much cold turkey, jumped into painting. <sighs> mm, wasn't very good. Uh, not a good start. And uh, for years, I would enter the Minnesota DNR stamp contest. The, the DNR, based out of St. Paul, uh, has a contest every year for the the honor of the artwork being select your artwork being selected to go on the stamps that hunters and fishermen have to have to buy. It was very competitive, but I wanted in. I wanted to take a crack at it, and so I I did. Interestingly enough, my first entry got third. For years thereafter, I never got close to third and that hurt. And I finally won in, I won the 98 con the contest in 1998 for the 1999 stamp. I think there was a single factor in the painting that I finally won with that, that, um, that did it. And that was storytelling. Um, that particular piece was, was, it's this green wing teal over here. And I have the male in a very animated pose. He's preening, his wing is back, his body is twisted, his, his head is, is back here to preen. Very animated. And, and his bride, his hen, is also very animated, except she's the, he's up and preening and you know, and she's down, very docile and, and looking to grab something to, to eat or peck away at or what. So he's up and proud and she's just down being tender and and it's it's kind of a circle. In design terms, it's a abstract in abstract terms it's a circle. And so I kept trying with the pheasant, try and lose, try and lose. And uh, finally I got a very nice phone call that I won the pheasant. 
And at that point, I said to myself, you know, they have four. They had four then. Uh, duck, pheasant, trout, and turkey. And I said, I have two. And uh, this was really wonderful because this was the fifth. And uh, at least two artists now have gotten the four that, that, I, that I happen to be fortunate enough to be the first one to get. Um, but nobody's got five yet. So that's, that's still a little special to me. I paint in oils. Most stamp artists paint in acrylics. I prefer oil paints. Acrylics dry very fast, and there are people with personalities that that works with. That, that just works for them. That does not work for me. Inspiration can come from many sources. I will see a sunset, a particular sunset. Out of a, out of a hundred sunsets, this particular one has such colors and they they might not be bright color they may be very subtle and that's one of the reasons i try and carry my camera everywhere i go because you don't know when when it's going to knock on your door but just a just a sunset or a sunrise or a color in a flower really uh almost anything would qualify and you feel your heart move that's the measurement for me oh that's pretty Oh, I just love that. I require my meter to be moved. And you know what I mean when I say that. I have to feel something. Now we go back to the Holmes Theater, where local band Hardwood Groove tells us about their original songs, inspired by growing up surrounded by the beautiful nature of Becker County. And so I'd like to introduce Hardwood Groove. Thanks again for coming. Uh, it's a funny story. I was actually, I think we were texting each other, trying to come up with a name. Uh, Thorn being friends, I was throwing out jazz grass, you know. And I think Dan came with like Hardwood Grove, or maybe it was Oak Grove, and that became Hardwood Grove, and then somebody threw Groove on the end of it, and I think we were all just, you know, texting each other, and that was the one, so we stuck with that. <laughs> If there's anything that differentiates our music from other people's music, I think that it would just be, you know, I've grown up with a lot of my bandmates since we were very young, and we've all come from the same walk of life, and maybe that's something unique to a lot of other bands out there where they're maybe a little more thrown together as just good musicians that are trying to get somewhere. We're all really good friends, and I think that comes out while we're performing. We have a lot, a, a close group of friends that we all get together, and we used to all just hang out next to a campfire and sing and play and be merry, and, you know, and enjoy life and just play play some good tunes that we like to listen to and then you know we started writing songs you know I kind of when it started with Dan and Jake and I who you saw just playing the acoustics you know it was kind of like a jazzy grass hence jazz grass um, but now it's a little bit you know it's folk and and jam band and bluegrass mixed together with with maybe some you know classic rock in there you know it's a bluegrass and folk kind of based that's that's one style and then also I'm really into like jam band type stuff and rock and roll and, um, funk and all sorts of things that kind of come into play what I what I really picture us as is is an electrified 
folk grass band. Um, I, we all have huge influence in, um, in bluegrass and in folk. And, but I, I still love the intensity of an electrified band. What's our music about? Um, Dan has a song that that is about love and loss. Uh, he, you know, he lost a, a father a couple years ago, and he sings about it. And that was, and that's a, a very touching song. So it can go from anything from staying out late, drinking, and go, having to go to work in the morning, or or missing loved ones, or even funny stories. We have a song that uh, is all about, literally, almost word for word, what a character, one of Dan's neighbors, told him about his neighbor. So there was this neighbor feud that we wrote a song about. So, you know, it, it, can, it can go anywhere that we let it. is an inspiring factor. Uh, there's quite a few references, I would say. I think the first line of my first song um, is, I was looking at the trees as they grow their leaves in the green, green fields of Becker County. So that was my first attempt at writing a song. So yeah, that's a big factor. I think that, you know, a lot of times when you're writing music, you're, you know, it's going to tie into something that's happened to you as a person, or it's probably a little window into, you know, where you've been in life or, or you know, how you see things. And so I think that when you're listening to some of their tunes, that that's probably where it's coming from. This music is it's accessible to a lot of variety of people I have you know as far as far as uh, demographics you know everyone from the little kids that show up at our earlier shows are dancing around and having a good time and as you know adults that I've known most of my life you know old teachers and things like that they they always have good things to say too so I think that is a, that's a cool thing about the type of music that we play is that just a lot of people can get into it. Please help me give a warm welcome to Jill Riley with 89.3. She will kick off this great concert tonight with Hardwood Groove. Amy Stearns here, um, the director here at the, the theater, she contacted us. She told us about this opportunity that this caravan du Nord was going to be coming to town. So we were, we were happy, you know, very happy to come and, and play on our, our stage here because it's such a great theater, beautiful theater. My neighbor is east at her barn to fire, called the law and blamed it on me, oh, sheriff, sheriff, it was not me, I was oversleeping in the willow tree. This show was exciting because it was sold out. Uh, quite a while in advance, I believe. Uh, it was a lot of fun. 
Playing in a theater is fun because people are sitting down, they're in comfortable seats, and it's more like you're putting on a performance or a show. So the theater show is definitely different than, let's say, us playing down at Zorba's, you know, where it's, it's, all, of our, it's all the locals just hanging out. So yeah, it, a little nerve-wracking, but still, yeah, like I said, that's, that's what makes it fun. The other day I heard them crying across the pasture when I called the flower. I keep playing because I have a really good time while I'm playing the music. Uh, it looks like I'm making people happy. I like to think that I am. That's my favorite thing about uh, being in the band and playing the music and the relationships with the other band members. You know, we're all good friends and that's fun too. As of now, we, we haven't recorded any type of album. Um, that would definitely be probably one of the uh, goals, uh, immediate goals anyway, getting that out. Our goal for the future in the band is different if you ask uh, different people in the band. My goal is to usually, if we're playing at night, make sure that we're going to be done by one o'clock. You know, but their goal could be very different from that. I think in a long term, non-joking, where are we going? I'd like to continue to see us, you know, perform for as many people as possible. I really enjoy performing for municipalities and uh, I think we'll stay around here. That's all for this week. For more information, go to our website. See you again next time on Postcards. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota, shalomhillfarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave.